So today I decided to read the full chapter of Exodus chapter 8 um, because it started from the previous lesson in the daily guide. And I decided to read the commentary on it. It's supposed to be for tomorrow, but I decided to read on it. It said, the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials. And said Second Peter 2, 9. But the main text was, or let me say the main text is Exodus chapter 8, verse 16 to 32. And this is how it reads. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. That is what God says in Psalm 91, verse 10. People have asked why Christians had COVID-19, even when they claim this promise. Have you noticed it was the next verse which Satan tried to apply out of context to the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4, verse 6? In our reading so far, the children of Israel have suffered from the plagues exactly as the Egyptians did. They had no other river of their own. When the water of the Nile turned into blood, the frogs invaded their homes. Two, to this day, we who are the children of God experience the same plagues that affect the communities where we live. The reason is that we are part of the broken world order, reaping the consequences of the fall. Now take another look at verse 22 to 23 and see how God does something different with the plague of flies. The distressing swarms avoided the district of Goshen where the children of Israel lived. Thankfully, the Lord does make exceptions for his people today as well, not as a rule, but as his, as his own discretion. So this reminds me of um, uh, certain scenarios that have happened in life where, for example, when my dad was sick for many years, actually, we were in Nigeria. That's where I was born. I was born in Nigeria. I am all my siblings. And dad fell sick. And this sickness was terminal. According to the doctors, there was no cure. And we decided to come back or let me say my parents decided that it was time to come back to Ghana. So we came back to Ghana. Um, and that was after my SHS. So we came to Ghana and dad really suffered. The sickness was, was, was something that we could not, we tried all means, we tried herbal means, we tried other recommendations, but it didn't save our dad. Finally, in my second year in the university, my dad passed on. But the thing is that I was on vacation when it happened. I was on vacation when it happened. The school had not reopened. One night, I just heard people started crying in the house or my mom started crying and there was an uproar. So I came out and I went to the sound or towards the sound and my dad was gone. Okay, my dad was gone. I went into the room and I prayed the same prayers of of promise, claiming the promise, reminding God of what he said in his word and his many promises of healing, his many promises of how he would separate the the saints from certain tribulations, sickness, his protection, his covering, why the wicked would um uh wicked are prospering, the righteous uh uh are perishing. I asked God many questions. I asked God many questions because I couldn't understand. Daddy was our... Uh, we have depended on dad for all this while. Of course, mom was doing what she was doing. But to lose a parent was too much. To lose a parent was too much. Our prayer was that dad would be healed. What did we not do? What prayers did we not have? Healing prayers and events at church daddy would i mean we would bring daddy from home i mean he was he was bedridden i mean he couldn't move on his own he couldn't do stuff on his own but in the end the holy spirit consoled me with the fact that 
God does what he does. Maybe in heaven, when we come to heaven, we would ask him to explain to us why he did what he did. But whilst we're on earth, we cannot question God. I remember when Job tried to question God and God threw the questions back at him. And Moses um, and Job had to, to run away from those questions because he didn't know the answers. Okay. When God was building the foundations of the earth, where were you? I was not there. I don't understand God's works. I don't understand how he does his things, why he does his things, why he favors some and doesn't favor some, even though we are all on the same earth. Why some people are born to rich families, why others are born in the slums, why some people have a hard time in giving birth to children and others even when they don't want it, they are just getting it and then they are just having abortions and abortions. And yet when they marry, they give birth to kids and somebody who has kept herself pure in the end is not able to give birth to a child and is barren for years or has a complication and the womb will have to be taken out or would be in her first issue and then she will die at childbirth. Yet she served God wholeheartedly people who have served God and toiled and gone for evangelism and won souls and have lived their whole lives serving God will just pass on would die mysteriously would have various issues in life would struggle would suffer financially food to eat would be thrown out of their houses because they couldn't pay their rents but I get a consolation in God that we are not meant to understand God. We are not meant to understand his ways. We are just supposed to serve him and worship him and obey him to the latter. What he says is final. God has the final say. He is the one who created us. He's the one who controls our life. He's the one who has the power to say, it's okay, come home. He can call us at any time. Look at Miles Monroe. He was not an old man. He was strong. He was energetic. He had a lot that in our wisdom said that he has a lot more to offer the world. His books, his sermons, his um, motivational speeches, his conferences, going nation by nation and impacting lives but <laughs> the funny thing is that god said it's time to come home and the method by which god called him home to us humans we feel that that was very cruel why not just let him sleep in his bed and just take him that uh, we say that oh he was not sick Nothing was happening to him in the morning. We just saw that he had gone to be with the Lord. I know we've not heard of any other story like the case of Enoch who walked with God and he was not for God took him or the story of Elijah where a chariot of fire would come and take him. And I mean, if that happened in our days, we would feel that, wow, this is a miracle. And we would kind of appreciate it that we know that this is the hand of God who has just taken him. But now, the only method of going back to heaven is by dying. Okay? And dying comes in many ways. Through sicknesses, through accidents, or through people just living and giving up the ghost. Some people's own chale is very painful. People, oh, Some people have seen people we have prayed for, we've, so, we've held hands, we've, we've visited them, encouraged them that your chale to be better, you'll be fine. Yet they died. I had a friend in my second year also. And those of you who are my classmates in Kern University, a computer, um, electrical and computer engineering, you all know him. Cancer. No, was it cancer? No, it wasn't cancer. I think something with his intestines. Yes. And he grew lean and lean and lean and lean and lean. We prayed, we supported, we encouraged, we visited. But the guy still went. 
yeah, this guy was a good Christian. He was not one of the rough guys who say maybe he has ingested something wasn't supposed to ingest it. Ingest, he was not someone who lived a, a rough life or anything. Why is it that bad things happen to good people? And you ask God, and God will just send you to, to a verse in his word. And he will say that, why was this man blind? Was it his parents? Was it him, his sin? And who, what, why was the reason why, why this man was blind from childbirth till now? And Jesus would say, this man was blind just for God's glory to be seen. God is a show guy, Charlie. He's a love show. He would want to glory in your predicament. He tells Paul that this thorn in your flesh is going to be there. I'm not taking it out from you. It's going to be there, no matter what is there. It's there, it's there. Don't ask me about it anymore. You dare stay there. It is going to be there. I, I'm, my grace is sufficient for you. I glory in that your suffering. Hey, so some people there, God, you've made them so that as for them, theirs is to suffer, and then for some other people there, theirs is to chill. Child, let me try. I want to be part of the chilling people. So, okay, but God will just say, you dear, as for you, this is your cross to carry. Everybody have their own crosses that they are they are carrying, but for you, this is your own cross to carry. This is your own cross to carry. And sometimes we will not understand God. Maybe one day when we all go to heaven, we would understand. So everybody try it, try it for us. Make we go heaven. Make we go ask God why he did some of those things. Why he took some of those love, loved ones from us. Uh, people will get married two months, three months, then the spouse dies. Charlie, you don't understand. You just don't understand. Okay, I have one of my daughters got married. The mother was at the wedding, and in one week time, the mother passes on. So anytime she's going to be celebrating her anniversary, she knows that in one week time, she will be mourning or remembering the death of her mother. This is just something that happened just a few weeks ago, two weeks ago. Okay, we all went for the engagement and the wedding and celebrate. The mother was there, happy, but a week later, she sends me a one week notice of the demise of her mother. It's like, wow, you are not even back from honeymoon and you have this bad news. I mean, honeymoon has ended. You just have to come back because your mom is dead. Why does this happen to good people? And the mom was a sort of mommy. I mean, she was a, a woman of God. It's, okay, the father too is a man of God. They are both, um, uh, what do you call it, pastors, okay? So she's been serving God. She's been dedicated to the work of God. Who knows how many souls have come to God through her ministry, what miracles and um, blessings have come to people through her. But God is sovereign. We just can't understand God. We just say, God, have your way. We submit to your will. We submit to whatever you have said. We submit to whatever you are doing. We just don't understand it. We wish it didn't happen. To see a loved one suffering and struggling in pain, cancer or diabetes or whatever disease the person may be suffering from. You can see the person is in pain. You wish you can share the pain with the person. You pray with the person. You fast. You even go into covenant with God. Say, God, if you do this for me, I will not... Uh, 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 sin again. If if you do this for me, I dedicate my life to you. If you do this for me, if you heal my mother, if you heal my father, if you heal this loved one of mine, if you prevent this person from going, I dedicate. I will give you my five month salary. I will do this for you. I will dedicate my life to serving you. I will go out witness for you. I will be a test uh, to, uh, uh, a witness for you. I will testify about your goodness. We will say all that. Yet God will just say, mm, this person is coming home. God will take the person away. He will take the person away for you. Why is it that bad things happen to good people who will not understand why God lets it happen? Okay, because in the Bible, we see stories of like Job. Job lost everything in, was he in a day? He lost everything. His children, his property, his animals. It's only his wife that God didn't take. I don't know why God left his wife, but God knows why he left his wife. 
And she was the one who was even saying, curse God and die. But he refused. But at a point in time, he couldn't bear it anymore. Satan st still went to God and God said, God told him that, Charlie, don't touch his life. You can do anything to him, but don't touch his life. Okay? So we had people like that. God, God would make them go through stuff and bring them out miraculously. But there are some people, God will not do anything for them. They will, through that means they will die. So sometimes it becomes worrisome for us as Christians because we stand on the faith that we have through his written word, through his revealed word. Well, let me say through a rhema word we receive from him through his spirit. And we stand upon those promises and we, we put and bet our last on those promises and depend on him. And we feel that God should answer us, God should give us a breakthrough in this situation. But in the end, we realize that no, it doesn't happen. So God, in the end, you made, after um, Job went through all that, you blessed him even 10 times more than he was. You gave him more a better wife. You gave him beautiful children. You blessed him with property and livestock, even far more than he had before. Let's go to the three Hebrew boys. Daniel was enjoying whilst his three friends were, were, were going to be thrown into the furnace. And yet they didn't give up. They said that we serve a living God. He's going to deliver us from your hand, Nebuchadnezzar. But even if our God will not deliver us, still we will not bow down to this your given image. No, we will not. So that encourages me on the posture we need to have even when we pass through tribulations and trials in this world, even when we are going through bad things in this world. You know that that's our cross to carry. That's our cross to carry. So put yourself in the shoes of those boys. I'll look up and I'll see Daniel as one of the princes there. He's, he's my paddy. I mean, Charlie, we all came out from Israel together into this land. They chose four of us. They took us through whatever trainings because they were found more intelligent than many and we were made princes. But when it came to this scenario, Daniel is safe, but the three guys, um, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, are facing that trouble because they didn't bow. I know Daniel didn't bow, but at, the, at that point in time, Charlie, the attention was on these three guys and they were thrown into the fire. Okay, if not for the saving grace of God that saved them even from that fairy furnace, I would say they just knew that their lives were over. Because the people who were thrown, who threw them into the fire, got slain by the heat of the fire. They didn't even enter the fire. Just by being around it, they were all slain. By these four Hebrew boys, got a miraculous salvation. So that's another story where God came through for his people. Wow, God did it. So in my situation, God, I'm going through this situation. Are you going to deliver me like you delivered these guys because I'm standing upon your promises? God can either say yes or no. So if it is yes, you have heard a lot of testimonies about people who have had their breakthroughs. And you say that, wow, God, you did it for this guy. You did it for this woman. You did it for this, my brother. You did it for this, my sister. So I have faith in you that you do it for me too. I've seen people who were sick, close to death, and then they recovered. Recently, our, our brother, Asaf, Asaf Diary, um, he, we heard he was sick. And then we, we, the Christian bloggers, came together and we prayed and we prayed. We spent time to pray. We discussed how we could help him, the support we could give him. We raised funds to help um, take care of his medications. And for all you know, God had his own plans. This guy is a young guy, full of life. I mean, he has so much ahead of him. He has done so well. Many of you know Asaf Diary on YouTube and on Facebook. You know, he is one of the Christian bloggers who have been there. I mean, Charlie, even before some of us knew what was Christian blogging, he had already started. He has impacted lives. He has done so much. But why is it that he had to go like that through sickness some of us don't even know exactly what kind of sickness it was, but it took him 
Now he's in heaven. I know he's in heaven. I know he's in heaven. For a fact, <laughs> I know he's in heaven. But we wish that God wouldn't have taken him at this time. Let him live to a good old age. And let him see his children and his children's children. Let him have a lot of time, make a lot of memories. And when he's going at that good old age, we would cry, dear. But it will not be as much as the pain we feel now. But in the end, we are consoled that God is sovereign and he does what he does. And he will do what he will do. He said that, Charlie, Daniel, it's time. You have suffered enough. Come home. And Daniel has gone up to be with the Lord. What am I saying? I'm saying that God is sovereign. And then there are some people that he would not heal. They will go through the pain. They would suffer and suffer in that pain and they would die. It doesn't mean God doesn't love them. It doesn't mean that they did something unforgivable that God cannot forgive them. And it also doesn't mean that we who are left, God doesn't love us and God is wicked and God doesn't care about us. No, far from it. God is not just. I mean, God is not unjust. He's not going to destroy the righteous and the wicked together. No, God is not like that. But for any saint who is called up to be with the Lord, we know that God had a plan, a time, and say that, Charlie, it's time for you to come home. Come and rest in the bosom of your Lord. So I just want to encourage us this morning. I don't know. This is, <laughs> I'm reading this from the Daily Guide. It, I was reading the Tuesday session for today the people of israel who are asking pharaoh to let them go to worship and it ended at 8 verse 15 i decided to read the whole chapter and then and came to this uh, session to read what was there and it says that charlie no matter what happens some people will claim the promises of god and claim it and claim it and claim it it will work for them God will come through for them. God will save them. God will provide for them. God will give them a testimony. God will give them a miracle. They have carried their cross and God has saved them and delivered them. But there are others that God said, as for you, the thorn will continue being in your flesh. It will be in your flesh. I will not take it out because my grace is sufficient for you. And I glory in your suffering. And God will take them even with that predicament and that suffering to us humans we feel that it is suffering and it is pain and yes the pain is genuine yes the pain is valid but god to him he glories and and he enjoys and he's happy when his son or his daughter through whatever means would come up to him to rest he's happy for all those who have passed on and who are in the Lord and have gone, have been called up to glory. God is happy. He's happy that his children have come to him. This world is not our home. But many of it, many a times we, we cling to it. Many a times we forget that, Charlie. That is just a transition period. Many of us are afraid to die, Charlie. When we think about it, it's very, it's very serious. Charlie, me too, I'm scared. I'm, I'm afraid of dying. Nobody wants to say, oh, who wants to die? Then you see everybody's hands up. No, um, you may not even get any hand up. Nobody wants to die. Okay, but we are. You. this is where we were born into. This is what we are used to. We are alive today and this is what we are used to. Many people tell us, oh, the spirit realm is the real realm. The physical one is not. It's just a temporal something. Yes, we know everything existed in the spirit and was spoken into being. And it exists in the spirit before it manifests in the physical. And in the end, this flesh would go back to dust and then we'll go back into the spirit realm as, I mean, from where we came. But Charlie, nobody, if you ask anybody, nobody will be willing to say, oh, maybe I want to die. No, some people are suicidal, yes. And there are people who have suffered and suffered and say, Charlie, I feel dear. I want to just go. I want to just die. But if they had another option, Charlie, they would want to leave. They would want to choose to leave if everything was going on smoothly. 
So today I just want to end by saying and encouraging everybody who is going through a tough time personally or who have loved ones who are going through tough times. That Charlie, in the end, just like Jesus, we'll pray. If this cup, if it is possible, let this cup pass. But Lord, not my will, but yours be done. In the end, let's pray for God's will to be done in every situation. If it is God's will that he would save us, deliver us, cover us, shield us, take us away from harm or from any form of pestilence, so be it, let his will be done. But if it is his will that through these tribulations and sufferings we would be called up to be with him, then so be it. So be it. So be it. God bless you all. And this is Clement Afre once again from CBC Inc. Hypes. Today is just some random thing that I just did. Um, I've never done this before and I just wanted to share my morning devotion with you and I pray that it encourages someone and I pray that it blesses someone. Yes, for all of us who have the daily guide, I'm sure you would have read the same thing or you would read the same thing tomorrow, Wednesday. God bless you all and have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you.